In the last video, I connected my upper and lower PCBs for my 386DX board with the zero DIN connectors, and also just quickly test fitted this to the chassis I'll be using. In this video, I'm gonna pick up and start getting in all the sockets so that I can put in the core components of this 386 system. As part of that, I'll have you know power coming in with some banana plugs. I'll have all of these. I'm going to socket most everything. I'll put in my ZIF socket for the ROM. I'll put all of these PSOCs in sockets. RAM will go in sockets, etc. Now, compared to the prototype board I was using before, where I was doing some th through hole, well, all through hole, and this one, I want to start to move some of these smaller components to surface mount. So I've got different capacitors and resistors that are surface mount. And for the most part, I am just opportunistic. I look on eBay and if I see some, some inexpensive components being cleared out that are like partial reels, I'll grab those. And uh, size-wise, I try to generally use maybe some 1206 for size. Uh, here I've got uh, 1206, uh, some resistors at 604 ohm that I'm going to use that go with the processor. Uh, as far as capacitors, I have some 805s as far as size, and those are my 0.1 microfarad. So that'll be a lot of these surrounding smaller capacitors around all the different ICs. And then I have some larger capacitors that are going to go on the four corners of the processor. And those are 1411s as far as size and, and just happens to be a 22 microfarad, which is probably bigger than I need, but maybe a 10 microfarad would be appropriate there, or maybe even less a one microfarad. But anyways, I'm going to put 22s on there. And generally, as I go around all of these ICs, uh, what I'm kind of defaulting to is an 805 size with a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. And so that's what I'll be, be using as I go through this. Also need to get things like power switch, power connectors, a little uh, resistor and LED showing power. I'll get those connected in and then just a whole lot of sockets here. So that's what I'm going to dive into right here is that part of the build.
Okay, so I now have this uh, at least soldered and some components in here. Um, maybe to just kind of talk through this a little bit. I'm going to turn power off for a second and turn it back on. Okay, uh, so real quick, a couple things that I was just simply looking at. I did grab just some test points and check for... You know, maybe a short between power and ground. So maybe here if I grab power and ground and if I measure that, you know, with the capacitors, you know, it's just climbing. It's over a K though, uh, 1K kilo ohm resistance between power and ground. Um, and I see lots of little silk screen improvements I can make as I go, but I'm not too worried about that right now. Uh, so I checked for that, and then also switching to power. And out of my power supply right now, I'm sending 5 volts straight up. So if I come up here and maybe just measure, uh, I'm going to grab, I'll just grab this point right here. There's a positive and negative header. And so if I measure that, I'm getting 4.9965, so pretty close to 5. And you know, my power supply says that I'm kicking out 5 volts even. Um, so probably losing a little bit just in the cables getting to that. So that seems about right. So what I'm going to do is actually take my power supply and just bump it up. Yeah, and here I'm reading 4.9994. But I just bumped up my power supply so that right at this test point, I'm reading 5.0061. Uh, so 5.00 and yeah, 67. It's fluctuating a little bit. So then I'm just going to measure points, for example, down here. Uh, 5.0055. Come down to this corner. 5.0052. And I suppose I could come up to the upper right here somewhere. Uh, 5.001 or 5.00, yeah, between 1.5 and 2.2. Two, it's fluctuating a little bit. So 5.0022. Um, so this one so far is maybe where the biggest uh, drop is. You notice I've got some solder just sitting on here. See if I can get this out of here quick. Uh, maybe just a couple other test points. You know, if I grab right here, 5.005 something. So I would say it looks like with no load on it, you know, the voltages are looking fine. Now, of course, once I get a load on it, that'll change. Uh, and let me just kind of walk through, you know, what is it that I have here um, as far as what I've actually soldered up so far. Uh, so I've put a one farad cap just at the, where power comes into each of the boards. Uh, so pulling from my power supply here through, this is probably a three foot cable with banana plugs. I was going to connect here to here, uh, but these connectors I'm using, actually, I need to slide one of them over. 
uh, because they face and come in towards the other PCB. Now I could reorient those, I could turn them to the side. That would probably be a safer way to do this. Uh, or if I had done that, I'd be able to connect up. I guess right now what I'm doing is I'm pulling power from right up here where power comes in, which is probably fine too, and that way I'm not distributing through the PCB. But anyways, I've just got this small little uh, jumper that gets power to the lower board. I put in a single PCIe X4 uh, physical slot. This is going to get me to my bus address. So if I can start getting this running, you know, I can hook up my debugger and, you know, I kind of know what to look for. I'm pretty, pretty used to going through that routine of looking for the addresses it's trying to jump to. And so I can kind of see if I'm getting normal looking activity there as soon as I start populating the rest of this. Uh, but all my sockets are in uh, for the most part. I've left out the socket for the pick the priority interrupt controller because that's a ways down the road and when, when I get to that point I'll put it in same with keyboard mouse I'm not worried about that or my 386 coprocessor which is a 387DX keyboard mouse connectors I don't care about at this point so I think if I'm just kind of scanning over this I don't think I'm missing anything so I'll come back in I'll get my processor and all of these chips and in the next video, I'll go through and actually populate all of these. And I'll just talk through what are the different chips I'm putting in, putting in as I go uh, to kind of give you a feel for that. But I've got my spot for my single ROM sitting here, so that'll be easy to get to. Uh, besides this movement, I noticed that I have a header, and you probably saw me desolder this. I have a header here that goes to this Nano for a little OLED screen. But at the same time, I'm going to want to be able to plug this cable into the PC. And I put in a straight up header instead of a right angle header. And that clashed basically. So on a revision, I'll have to slide this header over so I can have it vertical if I want. For now, I just took out the vertical and put in a 90 degree, which will get the job done too. So that's probably as good, if not better anyways. And you might have noticed, I don't know if in the playback, when I play it back at high speed, but when I went to use my soldering, desoldering gun, for some reason I had the cartridge in backwards and so it was not giving me much suction. Uh, not sure how that got put in backwards. Probably last time I used it when I was cleaning it, I just wasn't paying attention. But fixed that, desoldered this, pulled it out, replaced this little header. Uh, those would be the big things, I guess, at this point. So uh, surface mount caps, surface mount resistors, surface mount LEDs. I do have some resistors limited resistors that i i put in through holes um, i just didn't update the footprints I, I think as i was working on this no reason that these are through hole and i do have some larger caps that are through holes so that those were were intentional uh, all of these resistors around here are to do with this connecting to the via and that's going to be a lot of uh, SPI type of communication and so I have some uh, let's see I think they're pull ups and then some inline resistors and I was just gonna look real quick on that actually those are pull downs. so I I have pull downs on all of my chip selects and then I also have an inline uh, just a small 20 some ohm resistor inline and that's what all of these resistors are, if you were wondering as I put those on. These resistors here are for signals for the processor, and then I've got all these capacitors around. So that's where I'm going to stop this video. And in the next video, I'm probably going to detach the bottom, not worry about that for now, and try to get in you know, the basic components here and see if I'm getting address information, for example, coming out of this processor that look reasonable and actually maybe I will leave this this in um, maybe a video I'll do somewhere in here maybe even before I get to that is I want to get one of these adding cards to read these signals to send it to a debugger on my PC and that way I can kind of log what addresses am I seeing as I turn this on but so far I think uh, this was just a lot of soldering work, so nothing exciting in this video other than solder, solder, and more solder.